I want to talk, um, and, and basically, if you have any more questions about travel and so on, there's so much on our website. If you go to ricksteves.com, you've got um, all the scripts of all the TV shows, you've got the archive of five years of radio shows, you've got um, just uh, my blog and, and just lots of stuff happening. I want to mention one thing we're very excited about is creating our audio tours. We've got all of our audio tours now available free via iTunes. And these are like, you'd spend 50 bucks to get a guide to walk you through Trastevere in Rome. And our audio tours, I think, work better for a lot of people, and they're free. You just get your kids to download it for you, okay? And uh, <laughs> put it on your iPod or your uh, iTouch, and then you're over there and you have all these tours. We've covered now with really well-designed tours of all the major sites and walks in London, Paris, Venice, Florence, and Rome. And in the next month, I'm gonna do Athens, Vienna, and Salzburg. And they're entirely free, and you just grab them off the internet, our new thing in January is going to be an app that uh, deconstructs all of our radio shows and organizes them in country-specific playlists. So if you're going to Portugal, you can just take that file and you got all the material relating to Portugal there to listen to when you're in a traffic jam or on the airplane or going to bed after your partner or whatever and you just want to spend some time listening. So I hope you can take advantage of that. Okay, in the hometown of Salvador Dali, Cadiz in northwest Spain, they're really into their freedom. And this always reminds me that, you know, everybody appreciates their liberties, their lifestyle. It's so fun to see societies having sort of uh, ingrained ways of sharing their tradition from one generation to the next. Here in a little town in Italy, every summer on a certain day, the older kids teach the younger kids how to make a good ravioli. And it, just to watch that, it's just heartwarming. In a little town here in France, the Chamber of Commerce decided it's worth the investment to create an exhibit where people actually get to develop a nasal appreciation of the fine differences between the wine that they produce in that part of France. So here you have a, a, a good nose is a life skill worth investing in. All over Europe you find people who pay, who knowingly pay too much for a loaf of bread in order to buy it from the person who baked it. And I just think that's really interesting. In the United States, we're proud of having a freezer in the garage, so we only have to go shopping every two weeks. In Europe, they intentionally have a very small refrigerator under their sink, so they have to go to the market every morning. It's part of the fabric of their communities. They want to check in with people. They want to know the person that made their cheese and, and so on. Europeans love their fine wine, and they know how to fill it up cheap. They have literal filling stations for table wine, and it's like cheaper than bottled water. All over Europe, you have all over the world, smart, thoughtful societies grapple with the same challenges we grapple with, and they come up with different solutions. What do you do with your garbage? In Switzerland, you pay a lot for the garbage bag, and it comes with disposal. So you don't hire a garbage truck or anything like that. You leave the garbage bag out, and every morning it's gone. In England, they don't stop in the middle of nowhere. At an intersection, you have a roundabout. In the Netherlands, you have a park, a, a, a park and pedal. Or you take the train in, and you pick up your bike. Here, you've got four-story tall bicycle garage. It's so full, you have a hard time finding a place to park your bike. All over the world, people do not like junk mail. In Europe, they have a very simple solution called a decal. You just paste something on your mailbox that says yes or no to junk mail. And most people say no. 